Welcome to the Experience at Evangelistic. And oh, what a wonderful night it was when that precious baby, Jesus Christ, was born. Before today's message starts, this is the time that you can like, share, and start your own watch party with this live stream video. Again, like it, share it, and start your own watch party. Let's spread the word of God. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church, located in Port Wainemi, California. Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church is under the direction of Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Niven. This week, it is taken from Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4, and entitled, Clean It Up. If you've missed any Sunday sermon or Bible study, just go to YouTube and search on Evangelistic MBC for the Evangelistic channel. And all live feeds are stored on the EMBC's Facebook page. The next voice, remember this right now. The next voice you will hear will be that of our awesome, amazing, God-fearing, abundantly blessed First Lady and Executive Pat. Yes, all that. I'm edifying her. I am speaking life in her so she could give birth to this baby that she got the other day. Amen. Amen. First Lady, Executive Pastor, Reverend Rebecca Nippon. Thank you. 
God bless you, brothers and sisters of the faith. I'm the Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Nivens, and I'm the Senior Pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church, located at 125 East Pearl Street, Fort Wayne, California, 93041. Y'all know this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that you can realize that God has brought you a mighty, mighty long way. 
and he's brought you to this day that he has made. And you have something to rejoice and be glad and you have something to praise God for. God woke you up this morning. Well, preacher, uh, that's not all good, the only good thing for me because I woke up to mess, I woke up to problems. But you know what, let me tell you something. If God made the day, that means he can get you through this day. He can empower you in this day. He can restore you in this day. He can strengthen you in this day. He can forgive you in this day. And he can love you throughout this entire day. I pray that you realize that. I have a message and a half for you today, brothers and sisters. We are in the last part of a three-part series called Clean It Up. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, verses 1 through 4. Clean it up. The first section we got into, there's some things that we need to retain. The second section we got into, there's some things we just need to release. And uh, pretty much make it release us so God can release some things unto us. And now today we gonna end it with, there's some things you need to remember. But before we get into that, brothers and sisters, let's get into some prayer. Prayer is very important. Prayer opens up the atmosphere for blessings, for deliverance, a closer relationship with the Lord, depending on God, Yahweh, depending on Yeshua, depending on Jesus, letting him know that we still believe in the power of prayer and he is a prayer working God. And so if you have any special prayer requests, put it in the prayer box, which is also the comic box, the I Got You crew, it's just folks who believe in praying for others, interceding for others, encouraging others. Anybody can be a part of the I Got You crew. You don't have to be a member of the church to be a part of the I Got You crew. You can just be a straight up member of the kingdom of God. So all those who are in the I Got You crew, right then, I got you, I got you. And they're looking closely at those who need special prayer, specific prayer, whatever you need. They may even hit you up a word of encouragement in your box. Hallelujah. But realize that you're not alone. I'm not alone. You're not alone. We're not alone. God has not left us alone. So whatever you need, go on and put it in. Hallelujah. And I pray that you believe in the power of prayer. And if you believe in the power of prayer, go ahead and put it in there. I believe. I believe. I believe. Put it out there in the atmosphere. It doesn't matter if the devil see it or not. He don't have any power over you unless you allow him to have power over you. Put it in there. I believe. Because the Bible says, greater he that is in what? Me. Than he is in the world. I believe. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we magnify you, God. No matter where we're at in our life, Lord, we're grateful that we can still come to you for prayer. We can come to you for renewal. We can come to you for deliverance. We can come to you for healing. We can come to you for joy. We can come to you, God, for grace and mercy. We can come to you to be loved in spite of our flaws. When people turn their back on us, God, you're always there turned towards us. And God, we're grateful unto you and we love you. We ask you, God, that you will continue, God, to go before us, that you're more than the world against us, that you will continue to have your way in our lives. Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We praise your holy name. Glory to your holy name. We ask you, God, that, that you continue to have your way in our lives. Have your way. We put our families in your hands. We put our endeavors, our jobs, God, our community, our churches, Lord, our, our spiritual leaders, Lord, our officials, God, our president, God, the government. We put this entire nation, God, and all the nations, God, in your hands, God. We ask you to have your way. A lot of people are struggling during this virus, God. They've been struggling. It's been almost a year since we were told to go into our homes. God, Lord, over 400,000 people have lost their lives. And it doesn't matter to me where people believe it or not, or what political spectrum that they stand on, God. People have lost their lives, not just due to this virus, 
but due to other situations. We put their families, their grieving families in your hands. We put all those who are sick right now in your hands in the hospitals. Touch, Lord. Touch. Our churches, Lord, who uh, are on the threat of closing down, God, we put them in your hands. A lot of people do not realize what leaders of the of the churches of ministries are going through in these times, Lord, to keep the doors open. No matter what people think or say, God, ministries have to pay for buildings to worship in. They have to pay to keep lights on. They have to also be able to have enough help to help others who are in need. Lord, we ask you to touch. Touch, Father. Touch all around. Touch, Lord. Touch. Lord, we thank you for blessing us in many other ways. In many ways, God, you have blessed us and you have kept us. You have protected us. You have loved on us, God, when we couldn't even love ourselves. So we ask you to have your way. Have your way, God. Touch. Touch, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We know that the devil is seeking us like a roaring lion, trying to devour us and kill us and destroy us. But God, Lord, continue to be a fence around us. Continue to cover us, God. Set us high upon a rock, God, that our head may be lifted above our hands. Lord, we just love you and praise you. Lord, we love you and praise you. Lord, we love you and praise you. Forgive us of our sins and our future sins to come, our nicotines. Strengthen us, God, that we may more lean more towards righteousness in the flesh, more towards kingdom in the world. So, God, we just love you. Touch my mouth. Touch my mouth as I preach this word, God. Touch my mouth. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Glory, hallelujah. We desire more of your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We thank you. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Glory, hallelujah. 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 God, we praise you. We worship you. We magnify you. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify you. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Just let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Give it to God. Praise Him. Worship Him. Just let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Release. Release. Last week we told you to release. Glory. Hallelujah. Release it. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Release it, release it, release it. Release it, release it. Remember, in order to release it, you have to have your mind in a place of release. You have to have your mind in a place of release. Last week we got it to uh, verse 2. Set your affections. Set your affections in the right place. Your mind uh, in the right place. On things above, not on things on the earth. We broke that word affections and pretty much that section when it says set your affections means continuous, continuous action, not implying the place or the time of the action, but the motive and the act itself. Apostle Paul told the church of Colossae. He said, put your mind in the place of release. That's why we worship God. Because we put our we put in our mind in the place of release through worship and praise unto God. If I keep my mind on my burdens, if I keep my mind on my problems and my situations, I cannot release. I cannot release what needs to be released from me. And I cannot make it release me if I'm constantly 
having tithes to this thing. In order to release from it, brothers and sisters, I need to release my mind from it. I need to put it in the place, set your affections. Put in my affections, my desires, my mind, my thinking, my thoughts into a different direction that's going to benefit me and get me closer to God. So pretty much what we ended with last week, brothers and sisters, in that time of release. Remember, you're going to be doing that for the entire year. Retaining, verse 1. Releasing, verse 2. And pretty much in the release moment and time in your life, you must not just only seek God. Hear me out, beloved. We must not just only seek God or seek heaven, but we must also think heaven. We can seek God, we can seek heaven, but in order to really do that, we must think heaven. We must think about God. Hallelujah. Seek heaven, think heaven. Glory to God. That'll put you in a supernatural way, brothers and sisters, that nothing will penetrate through your peace, your peace of mind, your sanity in God. Colossians chapter 3, verse uh, 3 and 4. The NIV version says, You die. Let me say that again. You die. Oh, that sounds terrible, but not as terrible as you think. Apostle Paul told the brothers of Colossae, He said, You die. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God and your life is now hidden with Christ in God verse 4 says when Christ who is your life appears then you also will appear with him in glory well in those two verses I understand preaching for the past several weeks you got me to somewhat understand that I need to retain some things and I need to release some things from verses 1 through 2. Now you're telling me in verses 3 through 4 that I need to remember. Break that down. To me. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your... Uh, okay, I will do my best. What is Paul telling me and the church of Colossae to remember according to verse 3 and 4? Number one, here it is, off the bat, in verse 3, you need to remember there has been a death. Oh, I'm starting off negative. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm trying to get you to remember something. Because in order to retain and release, you're going to have to remember that there has been a death. We are reminded again that we have died. That's what Apostle Paul says. He says, for you have died. We are reminded that we have died to what? Sin. And to the influence of this world. He comes off the bat. Verse 3. For you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. One of the most surest ways to the child of God to enjoy spiritual victory in his or her life, brothers and sisters, is for that person to understand that they are crucified with Christ. When you read Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it, it tells you that we have died with Christ. We have crucified, been crucified with Christ. Even though you did not bear the punishment that Christ took, you were crucified when he was crucified. You died in him. If we can get a grip on that realization, that spiritual realization that we are crucified with Christ, that truth, and then we can understand and know the importance that we should be able to die in Christ, but also get up in him as well. When you die in Christ, you also, 
you also have access to getting up power with him. And I just want to say this real quickly, brothers and sisters. Some of you who are down and out, your down and out card has expired. You've been down and out for too long. You've been down and out down and out for much too long it's time to get back up you had a season of being down now you have a season of getting up i know we're still in COVID 19 i know we're still dealing with some dramatic things in our lives some tra uh, traumatic things and things that occurred that we wish it had never happened but your getting up season is now apostle paul is telling the church of Colossae. he's saying that you have a season of going down with christ and you have a season of getting up with Christ. Why? It's because you died. You died not just in the world. No. You died in him. You died in Christ. I want to read something. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Turn your Bibles there. I, I want you to see this real quick brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. You have to understand and remember the importance of your death. Romans chapter 6, verse 11 says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves be dead indeed unto what? Sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to give you a bonus scripture. Verse 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it, in the lust thereof. Apostle Paul is telling the church at Rome, he's also telling the brothers and sisters at Colossae, he's saying, because you died spiritually in God, because you died in him, that also took over your flesh desires, it also took over your mentality, it also took over your behavior, because you got up new in him, you got up with new life, brothers and sisters, you better strut that new life of God in you. You've been down for too long, it's time to get up, and it's time to look new in God, it's time to live new in God, it's time to be new and receive new in God, not just a new year, brothers and sisters. If the Lord takes me five years in reverse, God is still making my life new in him. It is not a day that makes my life new. It is by the grace and glory of God that makes my life new. It is the blood of, hallelujah, of Jesus that makes my life new. It is the blood of Yahweh. It's the blood of my God that makes me new and holding him. I'm not new because of a physical day. I'm new because of what the Lord did over 2,000 years ago. I'm new because he died for me and that he rose for me. That makes me new. And that makes you new. Glory to God. We are dead to sin. Meaning, brothers and sisters, yes, we're still going to sin. But we have to remember there is a death. That means there is a detachment from it. That means when we sin, brothers and sisters, we are willingly sinning. We are making a choice. It's, 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 it no longer has a stronghold over us. So when we give in to sin, we are making a free will choice to give in to the old things that our body or our old life desires. But remember, there's a death. Apostle Paul, I'm telling you for this entire series, Apostle Paul is telling the church of Colossae, clean it up. Clean it up. Retain, release. Now remember, there's a death which will help you clean it up. There's a death, there's a detachment from that hallelujah who am i talking to there's some things that's trying to act like it's new but you've been detached from it god is saying you're no longer attached to that thing he has allowed you to detach from it and you have the anointing and the power to detach yourself from it now at first it may seem awkward or it may seem like you need it or whatever it is but actually, God has given you access to detach from that thing. 
He said, brothers and sisters, he said, you die. Remember, there has been a death. All right. All right. Now, the reason why there's been a death is because the atonement of the Lamb of God, the atonement of God has given you the access to detach from sin, to detach from worldly things, to detach from those things that will hinder our relationship with God in the supernatural, hinder our relationship with God in the spiritual. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just, I'm just giving you the word of God to remember that there has been a death, beloved. You need to remember that you died to some things. And that means that it no longer has a stronghold over you, over your mental capacity, over your decisions, over your life, over your behavior. So you and I have to be strong enough to realize that if there's no longer a attachment, <clears throat> that means I need to access my detachment from it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put this in. Access the detachment. Access the detachment. Access the detachment for all that nonsense and all those things that keep you down and hinder your growth in God and hinder your relationship with the Lord and hinder your relationship with other people and hinder your leadership and hinder your anointing and hinder what God has called you to be. Access the detachment. There's been a death. That's what Apostle Paul says. Did he not say that in verse three? Ye have died. Ye have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are listening to Pastor Torrance K. Hibbins of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church as he delivers this dynamic message at Evangelistic Sunday Morning Worship Service. If you would like to support, partner with, or donate to the ministry, please go to Evangelistic website at www.evangelisticmbc.com. All right. For ye die, let's break this down even further. Break that scripture, that, that section down. For you have died. For all my English majors, you're going to love this. It's in the aorist, active, indicative. Just mean what? My English majors, aorist, active, indicative tense. What does it mean? It means simple action occurring in past time. So when Apostle Paul tells the church of Colossae, ye have died, he's saying that this ain't a new death. And this is not a death that is to come. But he said this is an old death. That gives you new results. Glory to God. This is an old death that gives you access to further and future benefits from God. Ye have died. Pretty much you died when Christ died. When you believed in God and you died in him. That is an action that was done by Christ on the cross over two years ago. Simple action occurring in past time. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You died to sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 2. You died. Ye are dead. Referring to a past fact. The translation should be, you died. That is, so far as your spiritual being is concerned, you died too. That is, we're separated from the former life and everything of an evil nature that pertain to to it. Don't give me that's just how this is just how the way I am. No, you died to that. No, don't give in to the I just can't shake it. You died to that. No, don't give in to well, it seems like it has a hand, a, a upper hand on me. No, you died to that. Because of your spiritual death in God, get this, brothers and sisters, you have access to detaching. Some things which gives you the power 
to overcome everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. Gives you the access to overcome everything. I have access to detaching myself from things that is not godly, which gives me, brothers and sisters, the access to overcome everything. I'm an overcomer. I'm triumphant in God. I'm victorious in God. Brothers and sisters, can I give you something that helps me? Uh, I talk to myself and my wife laughs at me. She said, are you talking to yourself again? And at first I used to be embarrassed now I say it uh, both. Yep, I'm talking. I'm talking to Torrance. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to myself. You're not always going to be able to rely on people to give you a pat on the back, to put you in a position where you need to be. And when I'm talking to myself, I'm actually talking to God in me. <laughs> Glory to God. I ain't detaching torrents from myself because that doesn't make any sense. I am torrents. But when I talk to myself, I'm talking to the God in me. I'm talking to the Holy Spirit in me. And I'm using him to talk to myself. You have to be able to encourage yourself, motivate yourself, convict yourself, talk to yourself, tell yourself the truth. Because I realize that a lot of people, brothers and sisters, cannot behave right or choose not to behave right, right? Because they can't even discipline themselves. So how can anybody else tell them right from wrong? If you can't tell yourself right from wrong, and if you can't tell yourself how to get yourself on track, and if you can't be able to encourage yourself then it is extremely difficult for somebody else to tell you right from wrong and to encourage you. It starts at home. It starts in this temple that God has given me. It starts with this mind that God has given me. It starts with this mouth, these lips that God has given me, this tongue to be able to put in the atmosphere for myself and for others right from wrong. Put in the atmosphere that God loves me, that God cares for me, that God created me in his own image, that God called me to his purpose and his holy will, that God, he's not happy with some of my behavior. He's not happy with some of my decisions. He's not happy with some of the things I have allowed attached to myself that I have not released myself from more, nor have I made it release me from it. God is telling you and I, brothers and sisters, that he has given us access to detach ourselves from some things, but also given us access to overcome everything. You are an overcomer. Talk to yourself. Encourage yourself. Hug yourself. Love on yourself. Tell yourself that you are victorious in God and that God loved you so much that he gave his son for you. Glory to God. Encourage yourself. If David can do it, you can do it. And you should do it. You should do it. But I know Apostle Paul is encouraging the church of Colossae. He's encouraging these brothers because they're going through something. They're dealing with false teachers. They're dealing with outside attacks and, and, and interference. They're dealing with different things in the church. And all they want to do is love the Lord. All they want to do is serve God. But they're trying to find and keep their identity. And thank God, even though Paul did not create the church of Colossae, he did not build it, he not, did not start it. Brothers and sisters, he still was a leader in it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can I tell and talk to some of the leaders right here? Just because you didn't build it doesn't mean that you can't lead. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I am not the founder of evangelistic. Pastor Softball is the find, finding pastor, founding pastor of this church. And he will always be that. And there are great pastors and ministers who have come before me. I'm in April. It will be nine years since me and my family um, have been here. Um, step our foot back at EMBC. And I'm honored. But one thing is for sure, just because I wasn't there in the beginning does not mean that I shouldn't lead right now. 
God has called you to lead. He's called you to to be a person of guidance, a person of leadership, a person of influence, brothers and sisters. Don't let anybody tell you else anything else. If God has called you to lead, can you lead? And you have a right to lead. Glory to God. Glory to God. Even in the midst of the adversity. Continue to lead. Sometimes you have to lead and confront and lead and forget. Glory to God. But you got to remember, there's a death. There has been a death. The Lord died for you to be in this position, whatever position you're in. He died for you so you can be in this position. What an honor. Oh, glory. I almost get choked up. What an honor. What a blessing. My God. My God. He died. For you to be in this thing, this position. Take advantage. Honor it. Be humble. Glory to God. What did I tell you? Uh, it, it's something that happened in the past time that is a simple action that keeps occurring. It has a, uh, it is, it's relevant. What Christ did over 2,000 years ago of why you're still here right now. Okay, there has been a death. Let me finish this. There has been a death. We're talking about remembering. Chapter 3 of Colossians 3a. There has been a death. Here we go. What's next? There has been a deposit. <sighs> Come on, preacher. There has been a deposit. When we were saved, we were given a new life in Jesus, in Yeshua. This is according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 3b. 3b. And your life is now hidden in Christ, in God. This new life imparts to us a divine nature. Divine nature. Here, go turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. You better preach, Peter. Glory to God. The new life imparts to us the divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. This new life guarantees the believer's eternal security. That's in verse 5 of, of, of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Go there. You're already in 2 Peter. Just go backwards. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says, Wherefore he is able to also to serve them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. We're talking about eternal security. We're talking about the guarantees of new life through Christ for the believer. Okay, lastly, go to John chapter 10, verse 28. The Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 28. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all love uh, uh, my mentor, one of my mentors, Pastor Curtis Moreau Jr. of Redeemer of Los Angeles. He always say, let's go to Bible country. <laughs> I used to love that. I used to scream out, take us to the Bible country, Pastor. Take us there. All right. Hallelujah. John chapter 10, verse 28. And I give unto them what eternal life. Thank you, Lord. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Because we are hidden in Jesus, we are in, get this, we, 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 we talked about there's been a deposit, there's been a deposit, but because we also are hidden in the Lord, we are in protective custody. Somebody just jumped when they heard that. Somebody just hollered when they heard it. We are in protective custody and none of the enemies of the soul and of this world can approach us or attack us or take us out of Jesus. Glory to God. We are in protective custody. Hidden. Hidden. You are hidden. This brothers and sisters Come on, English majors. We're back at it again. We're back at it again. This section where it says you are hidden is in the perfect passive indicative, which means what? It means pretty much what what a, what a Paul, a Apostle Paul is saying is, I'm still hiding. Glory to God. I'm still hiding. I'm, I'm remaining in him. I, I, I'm concealed. I'm locked together with him. Glory, hallelujah, where no hellish burglar or, 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 or any threat can come in and break that combination. I, I, I'm still hiding in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm hiding in him. The reason why I'm hiding in God is not because I, I'm, I'm fearful of my enemy. No, no, uh, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Uh, but a power love and a sound. I, I'm not afraid of my enemy. The reason why I'm hiding in God and I'm in protective custody is because brothers and sisters, I'm hiding from my own desires. I'm, 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 he's keeping me away from my own demise, my own destruction. He's keeping me in a place that I can be nourished and in a place where I can be strengthened, a place where I can be loved because I'm fragile. I'm weak. I, I give in to my sinful nature too easily. I give in to the things of the world. So I have to stay in protective custody in God. Don't feel bad that you're staying in a protective custody in God. Don't feel bad that there's some things that you can't do, some things you can't talk about, some things that you, some places you can't go, some things you can't entertain because you will fall back into uh, um, trouble and issues and, and destruction. Don't feel bad about that. That doesn't mean that you're weak. It's because you have flesh that you're wearing and the flesh desire the things of the world and what God is saying is saying God is saying stay in protective custody with me glory to God abide under me stay with me brothers and sisters I, I, I love that when, when, when I studied this and realized that Apostle Paul was really telling them he was telling the church of Colossae he was saying in spite of the Judaizers and the false teachers and all the stuff you're going through if you just stay in protective custody with God you will make it glory to God hallelujah that means you submit to him that means you stay in submission unto God. You allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. You stay in your word. You continue to pray, brothers and sisters. And I'm not saying that you need uh, to be closed off and, and you need to uh, be conceited and all that. I'm not saying that. Act like you're better than anybody, everybody else. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is that you just need to realize your weaknesses and stay in protective custody. We need to realize our weaknesses. Hey, how about you? No, no, no. I, I, I'm in protective custody. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Life, life. This word life. This word life here. When he says, for ye died and your life is now hidden. I jumped over to protective custody. But let me tell you about the importance of this word life. The word life. It doesn't mean a natural life. It doesn't mean a physical life. 
it does not mean that. But this word life here, the Apostle Paul says, for ye die and your life. Here we go. It means the resurrection life, which the saint enjoys Christ. That's what that word life means. That word life means resurrection life. Hallelujah. It is the eternal life given as the motivating energy and directive agent of the new kind of life. He or she lives together with that life lived out. It is hidden with Christ in the sense that uh, the theologian Vincent um, says your new spiritual life is no longer in the sphere of earthly and sensation things, but is with the life of the risen Christ who is unseen with God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. You better preach, Paul. Glory, hallelujah. So what Apostle Paul is saying to the church of Colossae, and he's saying to us, he's saying there is a deposit. There is a deposit here. You have been given a resurrection life from God. He has deposit resurrection life, not just natural life, not just a physical life, but resurrection. He has given you a getting up life with him. In order to have a resurrection, there you go. You have to remember there's been a death. Glory, hallelujah. And then he deposited his resurrection life in you. Write this in. I have resurrection life. I have resurrection life. You better say it. I have resurrection, resurrection life. That means I have getting up power. I'm getting up. I'm coming out of this thing. I'm getting up in God's glory. I'm getting up with praise. I'm getting up in prayer. I'm getting up with my new spiritual mojo. I'm getting up, y'all. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Woo! I'm getting up. We're getting up. Let's get up. Let's get up. There has been a death. There has been a deposit. While he has given me this resurrection life, I'm in protective custody. You better stay <laughs> in protective custody with God. He says, I'm hidden. That's what he says. I'm not, I'm not adding up. That's what he says. That's what it means. Hidden means protective custody. It, it means to be hidden with Christ. I'm with him. I'm, I, I, I'm, with, I'm not with any. I'm with him. He's the one that's providing for me in protective custody. Glory to God. You know, in protective custody, you're not alone. All right, there's, there's, there's somebody watching them. Okay, keep you company. Make sure you're all right. You're not alone. Stop it. You're not alone. That's a lie. You're not alone. Don't let the devil fool you. You're not alone. How do you do? In protective custody. There are certain people that come and can't come around them because they will compromise or say they. There's a reason why God got you in protective custody. I just have to say that. There's been a death. There has been a death. There has been a deposit. Here you go. Lastly, there has been a dream. There has been a dream. Paul chooses this paragraph by reminding us that this world is not the best there is. He says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 4, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We may have to deny our flesh down here, but it will be worth it. Over there. We may have to battle Satan down here, but we will find eternal joy with God up there. When Jesus comes to our faith, when he stands right in front of our faith and breaks our faith down, we want to be able to say that our faith 
And we want him to be able to say that our faith stood the test that we face every single day of our life and to be granted access to glory with him. Right now, every believer in this battle place, and this is a battle, this is a spiritual warfare every single day of our lives. Because the flesh makes war against us, the world makes war, war against us, and the devil himself makes war against us. You must continue to stand in faith and continue to see beyond the attacks. You must continue to remember the dream in God, which leads to hope. Each of the enemies that I that I told you about, the world, the flesh, and the devil, does everything they can to hinder us, to cause us to fail, and our faith to fail. But one day, hallelujah, you can shout on this, the battles will be over. This flesh will be changed and remain in God's divine image. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 53 through 54. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. We will leave this world and its sin. It's evil. It's problems. It's devil. And we will go to the land of perfection to bask in the glory of our Redeemer and our Savior and our Creator and our Lord and our King. Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. Right now, I have a dream. I dream of a day when I will go home and I will see my mama, I will see my grandmama, I see my grandpa, I will see my aunties, I will see my family, I will see my loved ones, but most importantly, I see God. <laughs> Glory to God. The one who woke me up each and every day. The one who put food on my table. The one who put clothes on my back. The one who kept me and protected me from unseen and seen dangers of this world. Who kept me in protective custody. My God. The God of all creation, your God, Elohim, God of Almighty. When he shall appear, we shall appear with him. And when he appears, brothers and sisters, game over for the enemy. I preached that a couple of months ago. Game over. He will be the beginning and the end. So when it comes down to it, we read verses 1 through 4. Apostle Paul is saying that the things above be constantly setting in your mind upon them. Not the things on the earth, for ye died, and your life has been hidden with Christ in God. When Christ shall be made visible, our life, then also you with him shall be made visible in glory. I know it seems that times are rough right now, and I know it seems that it's hard to get a leg up. But just like the church of Colossae, Apostle Paul is telling you, church, to hang on and hold on. Don't give up. Continue to retain, hold on to those things that God has given you. Continue to release, release yourself from the things that's hindering you and make it release you. And also, brothers and sisters, you and I need to remember. We need to remember that God has put us in a place where we can be protected. Don't take yourself out of that protection, brothers and sisters. 
Remember that there's been a death. Christ died over 2,000 years ago. He gave up the ghost for you and I. And he rose on the third day with all power in his hands. There are some things that need to be retained. Does our focus need to be adjusted? Are there some things in our lives that need to be released? Hallelujah. Do we need to lay down some things and realize that God has better things awaiting for us? Are there some things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that we need to continue to remember? Do we need to take a trip down memory lane and nail a few things down on our day, on a daily basis, and remember if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would no longer be. If there are needs and the Lord has spoken into your heart today, lay it at the altar with you. Put your mind on him. If you need to be saved today, get saved right now. If you have not confessed Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. If he's calling you, then you need to come to him and be saved. Apostle Paul Encourage the church of Colossae. God is still here with you. And he should be the center of your focus. Keep your mind on him, Saint. The times will get rough. But keep your mind on him. Have you given your life to Christ? You've done so. You fall and get back up in Him. And if you're doing all right, still have a job to do, pray for them. They encourage you to come with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's been a death. There's been a deposit. And then there's a tree. I can see beyond the physical. Because who I'm in protective custody. It's letting me know that everything's going to be off. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I clean it up 2021 let's clean it up Thank you. if God has laid in your heart to pour into this ministry we want to continue to ask you to do so not grudging it not out of necessity, but in love and charity. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for your contributions. We thank you for partnering with this ministry. And we just thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you so much. Continue to bless the kingdom of God, and I guarantee you, God will bless you more than what you can imagine. information is provided and we thank you in advance again. Yeah. Okay. Quick announcement today, I will uh, be preaching at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church of Linwood uh, with the leadership and direction of Pastor John O'Hopkins. John O'Hopkins, my good friend, brother, and I see him as a mentor to me. It is True Vine's 40, uh, 42nd 
um, year anniversary and the EMBC family sends their love, the True Vine, and even though we're not all able to be there like we normally would around this time of the year, uh, we send our love to True Vine and happy 46th anniversary and God bless you. Continue to pray for me and my family as we travel down the road to Linwood. Lord will have this way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God. You can also check it out. You can go to uh, True Vine Missionary Baptist Church of Linwood on their Facebook um, page. And uh, they will be live streaming their service. Amen. At 11 a.m. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Love you, brothers and sisters of the faith. Amen. Clean it up. Let's clean it up. Come on, let's pray out. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love. We ask you, God, that you continue to have your way. That you continue to be with us, cover us, and protect us. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Straighten us, clean it up. Everything that we said, whatever we can get out, let us use it for the firmament. We love and we praise you. And we say to Jesus, sure, thank God, and amen. May the Lord be with you, cover you, and keep you. I enjoyed you. Pray that you enjoyed me. The most important, let's enjoy God. Shalom, shalom, shalom. have been enjoying the experience at Evangelistic and listening to Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Nimmons, pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church located in Point Wyoming, California. If you would like to donate, partner with, or support Evangelistic, you can do so online. Go to www.evangelisticmvd.com and click the donate button. Evangelistic live streams all its services. Be sure to catch Hour of Power Prayer and Bible Study on Wednesday night during Wednesday Night Live. Hour of Power Prayer is at 5.30 p.m. Pacific and 8.30 Eastern. Bible Study is at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern. See you again next week at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Sunday morning worship service. Follow Evangelistic NBC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to the Evangelistic MBC channel on YouTube. All messages, videos, teachings, sermons, and material by Evangelistic found online is fully produced and owned by Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church of Port Miami, California.